So, so hello and love us. Today is Saturday. It is the third day of 1322. And it is the Payne family's traditional hunting day, but I'm pretty sure we're going to miss it because there are quite a few birthdays today. Oh my goodness, you won't even believe. So, um, everyone's fave, fan fave, Gree, it's her birthday today. It is also Eleanor and Adam's birthday today, both. And tomorrow it is Grania and Kieran's birthday, but we're going to do that today while we're here anyways. Um, and Dovili and Itis have made it to London and they are just going to, so they're going to be here for today and then they're going to head back um, to the holding. So we won't see them on Sunday, I don't think, because it takes about a day in my mind to get from place to place. So I think that we're actually going to go ahead and have a, a proper birthday party for Gree. Um, and I think we're going to do her birthday first because we all love her so much and I think that she deserves it. So we're probably going to go ahead and have a proper birthday party for her and then we'll do the kids birthdays later on once she's had her birthday party also while they're here itis and dovili are going to meet some people from london it wasn't uncommon for people to travel to other cities looking for partners if there was nobody in their area and dovili really hasn't found anybody that interesting so i would really like to know who Dovile wants to be with um, rather than just assigning her to somebody. So we'll see. So the lot that we're at today uh, was made by Lottie 5 and it was originally built for Sulani. But yeah, it's like a little ship um, and I feel like I named it Port of England as in like maybe the ship comes in and people come in and stay here. So that's where we are currently. Ah, and Dovile just wants to talk to her sister. Classic. Classic you, Dovile. So I guess everyone's just gonna do the introductions, the howdies, the hellos, um, the getting to knows, things like that. She still hasn't found anybody attractive. I'm beginning to think that Dovile will never find anybody attractive. Okay, Gree? Okay. Can we blow out the candles now? Aha, make a wish, Gree, make a wish. It's your birthday, and you're surrounded by people. Go, Gree, go! Oh, it's happening. She only blew... Woo! So what is her third trait going to be? Clumsy? Okay, I can dig it. And she was knitting, and I think we'll go ahead and keep that. Go ahead and add those birthday candles. Nobody touch this cake, please. We've got 14 other birthdays to get through today. It's really nice that Ava came as well. Oh, Idis and Dovile, do you want to meet your cousin? Oh, who ate this cake? You Jacobsons. You're used to having so much, to having plenty. Man, this day has really gotten away from us. I don't even know what happened. Okay, this is probably about enough. Idis and Dovile are both really exhausted as well, so we'll go ahead and call this birthday to a close and go home. Also, it runs so laggy on these big lots with so many sims here. And that way we can uh, all go home, we can do the little kids' birthdays, and we can do the rolls to see who will survive. Okay, so we are back home with these guys. Idis and Dovile are going to go take a nap really quickly. Um, Gree is going to work on making the cake for all of her millions of babies. These little guys are out here. Just enjoying some toddler time. Aww. 
too cute. And then Grania and Kieran, because they are infants and this is The Sims 4, have been left on the ground, so you know how it is. That's just what happens. They just get left on the ground. Mm -mm -mm. Kennard, you're pretty hungry. Why don't you go ahead and um, grab a serving? And then I'll, I guess I'll deal with the, all of these. Deary, deary. So I guess we'll do their rolls while we're in Cass. Um, but we'll go ahead and do Grease now. While she's finishing baking up this cake. Because it looks like she won't need to be cast. So for her young adult birthday roll, Grease cannot roll the number 6 or 14. This first one doesn't count, so... And she's fine. Of course she is. She's Gree. She's Gree. Oh. Go, Eleanor, go. And she loves the outdoors. And what will her aspiration be? First one doesn't count. Oh, she really wanted four. A little social butterfly. Okay. And next up will be Adam. Oh, Adam. Sweet Adam boy. Oh, look at the way he looks at his mom. And he is me. And what will his aspiration be? A motor. So he's a neat motor kid. Now, unless I'm very much mistaken, Gree has always had girls first. Um, I think Eleanor came first before Adam. I know for a fact Grania came first before Kieran. So we'll do them in order of who came first. So Eleanor and Adam are both going to age up. They cannot roll a 3, a 9, or a 19. So Eleanor is fine. And what about Adam? Also fine. Excellent. Next up, it is Grania. So let's help Grania blow out those candles. Now, technically, Grania's birthday isn't until Sunday, Grania and Kieran. Uh, but since we're here, we're going to go ahead and do that. <gasps> Come on, Grania. Yay! Yay! And she's independent. You can kind of feel that in your bones, can't you? Oh, what a cute outfit to come out in, Grania. Okay, why don't you add some birthday greet? I'm sorry, but... This is Gree's version of celebrating, is standing behind the stairs, peering with her piercing eyes. Very strange. And last but certainly not least will be our little buddy, Kieran. Everyone's crowding around just waiting for the show. I mean, this is so many birthdays. Yay! And Kieran's fussy, just like he was when he was a baby. Of course. Okay, so for Grania and Kieran, a toddler birthday, um, they cannot roll a 4, 8, 12, or 16. Now, when I looked at Grania in Cass, she did have the spellcaster icon above, so I think that that means that she has manifested as a spellcaster. So she's going to get one number removed because several persons has a toddler role for spellcasters where they have one number removed, basically. So just for the sake of easiness, I'm going to remove one number from Grania from 4, 8, 12, or 16, but not from Kieran. So, Grania cannot roll a 4, a 12, or a 16. The first one doesn't count. And she is fine. And what about 
Kieran, who cannot roll a 4, 8, 12, or 16. He's also fine. Oh my gosh, the Jacobson family, they are so lucky. They have had the best rolls. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. And now, because the kids are older, we're going to need to go ahead and make some changes so that they have space to exist. So I'll do that really quickly. So I figure Gray's pretty good at knitting. I think that this can work for their beds, you know, like Gray could have theoretically quilted this. Um, and so this is kind of the kids upstairs area. Oh my gosh, they are so adorable, buddy. Why cry? Oh, cause you're fussy. I always forget. Don't worry, kid. We've got lots of food. You're hungry, so go ahead and get some food. Um, Grania, you are sleepy, so... Gree, go ahead and tell a little bedtime story to your kiddo. Um, pal, what is going on here? And I think that's about where we're going to leave these guys for today. Um, but we are going to head with these girls just to pop in to Aiken's home just to meet somebody because meet the vampire child because he lives there so I thought might as well see but oh my goodness look at these two are they not the cutest and Eleanor still is like little Grieg Jr. Oh. Oh, Grania is asleep and Gree is off. How's Buddy doing? Okay, um, Gree? Kiddo needs to be potty trained. Okay, so are you two pretty much ready to go except for this horrible mess everywhere? Um, Kid, can you go ahead and get some leftovers? I don't care what kind of leftovers. As for you, will you please... Yes, Gree is a strict mom, I think. That's what I suspect. I suspect she's, like, not messing around with anyone. Wow, what a scene. What a scene. There's stinky plates everywhere. Itis looks miserable. Well, I think we're going to leave these guys here and we're just going to pop over with the girls to Aiken's house to meet the vampire just because he's in this world, see if they like him, and if not, I don't know. I don't know what to do. He's not even here. Well, well he's apparently flirty. Mr. Greystroke. You gossip with him. Are you? You're an adult. It's a bit too old. I wonder why he's so flirty. She got along well with him. That's a pretty good start to friendship. Do you find him? She finds him very attractive. She didn't get off to a good start. She thinks he's unattractive. Okay, maybe this is the guy for Duvile. Maybe this is him. Jefferson Graystroke. He's not a bad looking guy. Ask him about his day, why don't you? Okay, Duvile has a major crush on Jefferson and that's about all I need. Although, yep, go ahead and flirt with the guy. Compliment his appearance, and then maybe we'll go ahead and say that's it. We are, we are betrothed. We'll say we are betrothed, Jeff Jefferson. Now this is why we don't want to leave things until the last minute, Dovile, because we don't know anything about him. Is he a good person? Is he a bad person? He kind of looks a bit sneaky here, but maybe he's a good person. But now he's going to be... You're betrothed because you are, you have to get married next year. So, you know what? This is the guy for you. Let's not forget him. In fact, actually, what we'll do just to make sure we don't forget him. 
We'll invite him to surf, ladies, and then kick him out. Because I've noticed my sims just keep forgetting each other. Excellent. Okay. So, I'll see everybody in Lithuania when we get there, because we have several historical events, birthdays, and survival rolls to do there. For Vilkas to survive, he simply cannot roll a 9, a 13, or a 19. So let's see how he goes. The first one doesn't count. And so he's fine. Now for Danielis to survive, um, he cannot roll any odd numbers. Odd numbers mean demise for him. Oh, yikes. Okay, so that's the end of Danielis, sadly. I guess we can try and plead for him. Um, I'll bring them home, like, we'll pretend that Danielis just was, like, mortally injured, and we'll try to plead for him at home, since he's not, like, really our character. So let's say that Danielis is struggling, he was wounded, and so he is going to... Whoops! Oh no, whoopsies! Okay, so I messed it up, and we... We're not able to save him. That was really my bad. Um, that was really my bad. Okay, whoops. I don't even know if we're going to have his tombstone now either. And Oshra and Sophia. Oh, that is my bad. It's time for you to go to bed, my dudes, because it's the middle of the night. I mean, even with all the conflict, Oshra, what are you doing? Go to sleep. Oh my gosh, Vilkas, no, 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 this isn't happening. We're not losing you to the cold for whatever reason. I messed up with Danielis. It was my fault, my bad, but what can you do? Um, He did live a long time, you know, he lived 50 years, so that's not so bad. That's not so bad at all. Today, it is also going to be Darius's teen birthday, which is very exciting. Very exciting indeed. But we'll let Vilkas make some breakfast for everyone, and then we'll get on with the day. Okay, so in terms of the historical context of this year, this year in Lithuania, we kind of have to go back in time and reference something that happened earlier. This isn't technically about Lithuania, but it ends up tying into it. It has a big impact. So in 1309, there was a Polish king called King Władysław, the Elbow High. I'm just going to call him the Elbow High because it's hard for me to say that name. So King Elbow High asked the Teutonic Knights, specifically at the time Henry of Plotki, to drive the Brandenburg army out of East Pomerania, which had been left to him, but was under some contention about who it belonged to. Some people thought it belonged to them, but technically it had been left to King Elbow High in the will. Henry did do this, and he used the Teutonic Knights to push the Brandenburg army out of East Pomerania, but he went a little bit too far. When he did that, he did expel the army, but he also expelled the Polish garrison at what was then known as Danzig, but is now known as Gdansk. Um, and also ruined much of the city of Gdansk. So he destroyed a Polish stronghold and pushed their army out while he was also trying to get rid of the other guys. It's kind of silly. So when Henry of Plotsky destroyed that city and drove that army out, he'd spent a lot of money. And so he went to King Elbow High and said, I want you to reimburse me for the work that I've done. Um, which the king refused angrily. He was like, you ruined a city. You drove my own army out of here. I don't know what you're expecting right now. So Henry of Plotsky then decided to keep East Pomerania in lieu of payment. He just claimed, you know what, then this belongs to the order. Um, and then King Elbohai then claimed that the oldest Teutonic order stronghold now belonged to him. So they both basically were just like, well, if you won't pay me, then I'm taking this of yours. And fine, then I'm going to take this from you. This 
had long ranging impact because this turned King Elbow High against the order and King Elbow High ended up becoming the main king in Poland. So in 1322, several rivals of King Elbow High brought knights to crusade against the Lithuanians. One chronicler estimated that there were 20,000 in the army, which is an exaggeration, but illustrates just how many men likely did show up for this crusade. Um, and they basically laid waste to all of the major Samogitsian villages within three days. During the most important assault, the Samogitsians had either fought to the death or thrown themselves from their walls rather than giving up. But this was a major onslaught, a major attack against Lithuania, and it was something that led to a lot of people losing their lives and giving the order an upper hand. During this time, Gediminas had taken over as Grand Duke of Lithuania, and he titled himself King of Lithuanians and many Ruthenians, as well as many Rus, which was because he had been helping Russia to take itself back from the Mongolians. Now, I can't go into the whole his history of Russia. It's very complex. It's very developed. And all you need to know is that at this point, the Golden Horde, which is a branch of the Mongolian Empire, is basically running Russia with allowing the princes to keep their name, but not their power. So Gediminas is basically going around and helping out all of the people who will be his allies. He's been trying to rescue his allies in Riga because they were under control of the Livonian Knights. He's placed David of Gardenas, the warrior who almost single-handedly crushed the entire order's army, in charge of a major, major city in Russia. And he's devastated other places in order to support his allies and being able to break free of the people who have control over him. But when this happens in Lithuania in 1322, he needs to defend the Mamel River Valley to keep the Crusaders from being able to take over his entire empire. It's a turning point because, because Gediminas has been taking over a lot of the Baltics. He's been like working with his allies to, you know, sort of break free of the hold that the order has on them. But this was a major counterattack, and it was the first major one in quite a long time. It led to a big loss of life, and also it, you know, forced Gediminas to bring his forces back. So it was a pretty important uh, moment for Lithuanian history. Darius, my dude, have to tell you. Seems like it's about your birthday, buddy. So let's go ahead and make a wish there, friend. Go, Darius, go! Mmm, that doesn't fit. That also can't be happening. Cheerful! A cheerful kleptomaniac. Excellent. And what will your aspiration be? Which of those three will it be? Bodybuilder. Isn't that your dad's aspiration? I cannot remember. No, soul, soulmates. You found your soulmate. <laughs> okay, let's find out his prospects while we're doing his cast. Okay, so the only thing that Darius cannot roll to survive um, his teen age up is the number seven. First one doesn't count, so. He's fine, and will he get married? Out of a d20, only one or two means he will not get married. He's gonna get married, and how many children will he have out of a d12? First one doesn't count, so. Four, he has four baby tries. That is not very many. Okay, so I think that it's gonna be it for Lithuania this year. So we might go ahead and just leave these guys here for now and then go back to the main family just because we haven't seen them get this episode. So it would be nice to see them. Um, and maybe the girls will have made it back already. Who knows? Okay, so we're here with the main family and I think we're gonna go ahead and purchase some ducks. Um, these guys are out here just, you know, chilling, being cool. 
the girls are still away. Heidi is working with Knox on learning how to, you know, be a baby, I guess. Yeah, be a baby. Oh, good job, Knox. And he got rollover to back. Dang, he's just crushing. Good job, baby. Oh, and another one? Dang. This baby is just going for gold. Heidi, are you in fact expecting? Yes, but we won't see the new baby this year. Maybe we can just kind of work on their stuff today, you know? Maybe we should open the shop, actually. Maybe we should. Then we can learn what new horrors await us with this with this new percentage. So we currently have got 22,825 simoleons. Okay, let's open it up. <gasps> Whoa. That's a 7,000? Oh my goodness. What is this? Vitality nectar. My gosh. Whoa, we're just selling a bunch of stuff. Uh, we do have a bunch of stuff that we have to get taxed on, but that's not a problem for just yet. Oh, Earl Huxley, everyone loves you so much. Somebody asked recently if Huxley was going to get remarried. And, um, I don't mind. If you have strong feelings about it, let me know. He does have quite a bit longer left on this life stage. He's got another decade until he has to do his elder role. Um, but I, I mean, he's not one of our main family, so he doesn't have a set number of children or whatever, you know? So we can marry him off, but if we do, I think that he'll leave the family, like the holding because Esmond's inherited this holding now, you know? So this is currently Esmond's holding rather than Huxley's holding. So I feel like we obviously can do that. That's not a problem. Um, but it's just, do we want to? Let me know what you think. I'm happy enough for him to get remarried and that way he might, you know, even have children of his own and let me know what you think. If you think that he should get remarried, um, he definitely can, and we can encourage him to go on and have some children and live a life outside of ourselves. I kind of said for these two, whenever they got back was when they got back, so I'm not too bothered about them getting back theoretically a little bit early. Elspeth Jacobson just spent 12,000 simoleons on that vitality nectar. Thank you so much. You're a real lifesaver, and we appreciate you. Dovile, have you forgotten that guy that you met? Hmm? Yes, you have. Oh my gosh, look at our little cute family. So wonderful. Recovering after the famine. Growing. Oh, Itis is so big. Davile's gonna get married. It's getting pretty late, so I might send everybody to bed. And we might, um, when that happens, we might go ahead and deal with their taxes. But I'm going to have Esmond hang out with his child for a bit because he hasn't really done anything with baby. Dang, our shop is doing so well. Oh, look at that little face. Chippadoo! Yay! Okay, so while Esmond's putting his son to bed, we'll just talk about our taxes really quickly. So we started the day with 22,825 simoleons. We currently have 39,680 simoleons. Astrid, you're going to have to wait a minute, okay? 
So we started with 22,825, which means that we made 16,855 small lands in profit. Our 40% tax of that is 6,742. So we still did keep quite a lot. So we will have to only have 32,938 simoleons left over. That's our 40% tax. Um, so it went a little bit better than expected. And we have to go and help Astrid give birth, even though it's Monday technically and not Sunday anymore. Uh, I don't know what you're wearing, buddy. I mean, it is a very vampire-y outfit, but I don't know what you're wearing. It's not your outfit. Okay, go ahead and have baby. Can somebody... I'm gonna regret this, but can somebody put Aiken the third to bed? Another boy? Oh, what's his name gonna be? There's a name suggested by Duna Eider93, Alexander, and... Even though it's going to cause a lot of trouble with remembering who is who, Alexander it is. Does mom survive? She cannot roll a 1 or an 11. First one doesn't count, so... Oh. Oh my goodness. Okay, does baby survive? 1, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 17, or 20. Baby cannot roll. The baby is fine. Oh my gosh, Astrid. Oh my goodness. Had such a good year. The Jacobsons are like... He hates being held too? Got a lot of sims with that lately. Um, okay. Astrid, please pull through because you are like... Um, Aiken, I need you to go here, please. And bleed your family has not been very lucky when it comes to pleading i don't have a lot of faith we'll try though okay can you please i guess wail oh come on grim grim come on oh my gosh oh my gosh this family is so unlucky. <laughs> oh my gosh. This... Uh, okay, well... Fine. Well, that was an unfortunate way to finish the day. Alice is reaching the end of her life as well. Uh, Aiken's gonna have to get remarried. I don't know. Uh, okay, well, that was an unfortunate way to finish an otherwise pretty good episode where nothing bad happened, where so many Sims aged up successfully. But like we've talked about before, having babies was a really dangerous thing for women in the past, and I guess Astrid just didn't make it. So... I have no idea how long this video is going to be. It's been recording for a long time, but that's mostly because of Cass. So I hope everybody has enjoyed it. And I will see you in the year 1323. Bye-bye, everyone.